And I'm not going to lie, it's a lot of work, a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety over dissecting and splitting up the good, the bad, and all the half-truths. Because in the ICOC system, the system's like this. I would say that the half-truths are more dangerous than the falsehoods. Mm. Because they keep you, they keep you locked in and they hide what's really the things that are the most important. Um, for people who have been reached out to by the ICOC, hey, you're not crazy. <laughs> you're, yes, they behave like that and you have to realize that they are human beings created in the image of God. Jesus loves them. Jesus died for them. But they are holding on to an idol. They're holding on to a system. They're holding on to it for their identity. And it's hurting them. And it's burning them. And it's causing so much damage to them. And I feel sorry for them. I just wish you could just get them to break up the whole thing and get everybody to leave, even though that's it looks like it's going to happen anytime soon. Um, I do have ideas that there's another Henry Crete level event to go and probably go in and take a group of people with me and kind of like clear the exits to the fire doors, if you know what I mean. It's like, <laughs> yeah, you probably need to go. Lead Evangelist guy, shh. <laughs> Everybody, run, run to the door, run. This has happened before, it'll happen again. It may not happen again within your lifetime, run. Um, and then again, probably for everyone else who's been involved with things like this, I hope it's been helpful, especially for people in these other groups, because I know that in Cincinnati there have been people that's, – that's the thing. If you get involved with – there's a ICOC, a Great Commission, um, Every Nation groups at the University of Cincinnati, typically what happens is that a person gets recruited by the ICOC, they join – they leave and then they join one of the other two groups, which <laughs> yeah. is slightly better, not the best. Yeah. Um, but just try and help people get all this straightened out so they just don't cause any more damage hmm. and learn how to truly live the life that Christ intends for us. Life to the full, life by the power of the Spirit. Life where you can be secure in your salvation because of what Jesus did on the cross. A life of, yeah, you're going to sin and you're going to fall and you're going to fail. And trust me, I've learned that at a whole completely different level the last eight and a half months being married. Uh, yeah. I fall more than I should. Yes. And it causes great hurt to both of us. Jesus is good. And we just need ultimately just to help keep spread the word out, keep things going up on the internet. And they actually had a, a campus ministry conference in um, here in Cincinnati um, back in over the 4th of July weekend. And I couldn't, my wife and I couldn't go and do anything uh, because of pregnancy. So, um, I tried to get in there and interact with some people on social media in kind of a graceful type of way. Basically trying to do a study about the role of the Holy Spirit. And it didn't really get a whole lot of feedback after I got to the point where, okay, here's what the Holy Spirit does. What does the Holy Spirit do with you and your discipling relationships? Crickets. No, but then again, we try. Mm. Well, thank you so much, Michael. It was good to talk with you. Thanks for connecting with me. And okay, sounds good, Jason. All right. Okay. Talk to you later, Michael. Bye. Bye.